following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. We're looking at the Dow down 294 at 35,335. Uh, this is going to be very interesting because we had um, Facebook come out with very disappointing everything. And it's down 25%. That is a monster move down. And that's just telling us that growth is still being impacted, but possibly the value area is starting to move a little bit better. We'll see. Uh, question of the day, let me just do this. Well, did you get a trend flash high yesterday? Yes, I got a, a high a trend reading which said that there should be a 9 to 11 point move in the E-mini, even if it's from a lower down level. And of course, it got smashed overnight. The E-mini, look at this, the ES, I'll go to the continuous contract just for the moment. Uh, just got decimated. Uh, it went right down to the 14 period moving average after hitting. Uh, that was 46, just missed it, 4586 round number high. And this morning, early this morning, it went down to 4505, 100 points. I mean, that's just, that's nothing to sneeze at. Uh, don't mention sneeze. Uh, and what we're looking at is Right at the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, that's exactly what we're looking at. Will we be able to break above that by Monday of this coming week into the 4600s? That's going to be a big question. Right now, what we've seen is huge selling. Then there was a buy attempt pre-open pre that looked good, but I, I was very nervous about that. And then there was a failure, and that retest in this H pattern, let me just see if I can get there, because this is a really important moment in the general market today at this particular point. You see, the 200 period moving average in the E-mini at that, look at that 200 period moving average. It tried, it wiggled around it for about, this is a 10 minute chart from about two, two this morning till about four, maybe five o'clock, just at 4.30. And then Eastern time. And then it plunged, and then it went right back to retest and say, hey, wait a minute, I'm not finished. I, I want to see if the 200 period moving averages are repellent or a propellant. Well, it repellent. Boom. It goes above that, and that was at 7 o'clock, and that failure took out the left side low, and you took an equal one-to-one -to, -one to the downside of the move and the arch formation, and that was important. And right now, we're looking at the chance that we're going to try to form a, any of these Rally attempts were way premature. I think from what are we? Oh, 10, uh, from about 10:15 to 10:20 this morning, that's about the time that all the selling pressure should be over, and at least a little. Uh, the potential for a relief rally is there. I say relief rally because we don't know yet. It's still a little early in the day to see what's working. I always think of it like a sieve. Uh, you, you've got your grains and all the little grains that keep falling out and the bigger ones stay. This is what we're looking at today. And that's what I say to subscribers. We want to see, um, what did it say? This is a key sifting session for value and um, for value and, and things like staples or um, maybe within the sectors that are different sectors. You could be talking about the, the different sectors in the commodities, whatever it is. That's the moment that you're going to be looking at what is what is working. So let me just go back here. Um, as I say, this is the moment that you try to find a base and about from 10, 15 to 10. Oh, I'd actually say somewhere around 10, 15. Where are we now? We're at 10, 10. Yeah, somewhere within this period from now until 10, 35. That's going to be really important because any rally that sustains and at quarter to 11, we're looking at um, the, the Dow only, only, it's down 300, only down, say, 210 to 180. That says, okay, now you can see what's working, what's not working, what, what's failed to rally, etc. Now, let's get back to our story. So we went there. Let's just go to the actual S&P itself because I wanted to show you something very interesting. 
Look, the MACD cross positive, you usually, I like to see that in a leg B to the upside. I also like to see the stochastic at about 58 to 68% on this particular move. Well, it got to 60%. I also like to see that the histogram of the MACD, having cross positive, is now holding nicely in the positive area. That's the 0% line. Yep, that is. That's at plus 10. I also like to see that the nine period moving average which in this case is in a cell mode, is attempting or getting really close to the black 14 period moving average and is trying to cross positive. The moment it crosses positive, there's a really good chance that I'm going to be upgrading the S&P by signal, not the weekly, weekly is still in a cell mode, the daily by signal to uh, a buy mode. I haven't done that yet. I haven't got close because that nine is still way underneath the 14. But if that happens, that would imply that at least we're going to push over this downtrend line, the Chapman falling axe formation. I always have new people coming in, so let me just talk about that. I have a lot of questions I'm going to get to in a moment. I just want to take a little time because it's so important uh, to be able to articulate your thoughts and and I, I'm very visual, so I know that some people like me want to see it. So what am I looking at? You see this decline? It's it's like an expanding cone formation. Well, look, that's what I call the falling as you go up and then you come down, you make lower highs, much lower lows, and then all of a sudden you start to form a base. And if you break out from that that trend line on the downside, you can have a one to one to the upside and maybe test the left side high. I don't know about that. We have to go to the first high, which is really way up in the 4700s. Let's just, we can't even talk about that. We haven't got to the 4600s. So let's just say that this is the pattern I would be looking at. And this is the moment within the next 10 minutes or so that I think we'll start to see. Well, well let me just do the VIX index because that's also part of it. The volatility index must have popped right up. Yep, it did. It popped to 24.12. It hit the 200 period moving average yesterday in leg B to the downside. It's trying to rally. It's up $1.49 at 23.58. I suspect that we need a little more time for the market to decide what's working and what's not working. And we are seeing some areas that are holding pretty well. Uh, I need to do this because, as I'm saying, holding very well. We want to see what is the XLF doing. We spoke about this quite a bit yesterday and the day before. That's the financials. Well, the S&P financials are trading down to six pennies at 39.81. Nice action. And one of the reasons is I have for, for days and days I've been wanting to talk about this and I just keep forgetting about it. And now I can mention it because I didn't forget. I remembered. When you get a straight line down in a major move, 41.70 on the 13th of January in the XLF, and you cascade down to the 3660s, I think it was, let me give you the exact number, to the 36, 3682 level on the 24th of January, 3682. 36.82. Invariably, if there is a turnaround, you can have a very sharp turnaround and it can go through a 50% retracement, and that's kind of what you've seen here. So this is very important. There's a lot to look at. I'll be back in a moment, and I will be back with our Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So what we're looking at here, yes, the, the, the one minute uh, E-mini, we're looking at this cup formation. There was a peak B minus failure right there at about 940, comes all the way back. This whole area of 4510 in the E-mini uh, S&P really has been 4510 to 4505 uh, has been very good support. Now it's struggling at the 200 period moving average. Is it trying to turn this into a propellant line or is there going to be a magnet keep pulling back under it? I suspect there are enough people here saying, you know what, we know what not to buy. We know what to buy. Let's go in and do some buying. I, that's just the way the market looks to me like right now. We uh, we have no shorts at this particular time. We've we've had positions. We did experiment with a um, uh, growth uh, ETF, just one of the biggest growth ETFs has been on, on the downside. Fortunately, we had really tight stops um, and it got hit with that Facebook. Well, it got hit intraday yesterday. We got we got out with a few percentage loss. I, I'm still looking at it, uh, a scan saying, well, um, let's see what happens with this particular instrument over the next couple of days. It's over, very oversold. But I'm not even prepared to touch it until I feel a little bit comfort in saying that we've got a mix. And I spoke about this um, for a couple of, for about a week now, that the value side of things are working way back. Last night, in fact, here's a good example. Uh, the, the, the SPY last night was down about six points. The SPY, that is, the S&P fund, that's the S&P spider fund. But the SPYV... The value uh, was, in fact, most of the night it was just uh, unchanged or down uh, four, five ticks. And here it is down 17 pennies at 41.68, uh, down 0.36. And the S&P is down 1.1%. Uh, so that's what I've been talking about. I mean, we spoke about the same thing, that the difference between the IWM, which is trading down 16 uh, cents right now, 201.21. And the IWN also came, it got badly hit, but on a relative basis, look, it's up now 18 cents at 156.98. I think that's telling us a lot. If you look at yep, in the XLP, I mentioned this today uh, this uh, in my in newsletter, my opening call newsletter, S&P Select Staples is holding very well at the upper range. It should still go to the at 78 
area was about the high. It should, should still go to a leg D in the weekly chart. This is really interesting. This is very important because for for subscribers, investors, money fund, uh, you know, it doesn't matter where you are. You're looking to see where can I put my money if I built up a cash position, I've been doing about a cash position for a very long time now, building it up. For months I've been saying that. Uh, we, we just broke out in the uh, E-mini, now it's only down 47. And that's a lot, let me tell you. But it's trying to move higher, higher highs and higher lows. Um, and that makes the 4521 area really important support. Let's go back to our story here. I don't want to waste time on the near term. When we're looking at the big picture, I, w I want to say that within the context of the market, it is really uh, unusual to have seen markets at all-time highs just recently at the same time that the staples are at all-time highs. Where, this, when people say it's, it's, it's different this time and then others roll their eyes and say, oh, yeah, we always hear that. It is different this time. How could you have the TLT bonds not become a safe haven for markets that are being smashed to the downside or stocks that have been smashed to the downside. It's really unusual to see this. And that says to me in the bigger picture, the yields are unable to decline. They're at the higher level. Here's the TNX at 1.83%, uh, up 65.65, 18.31 uh, is up point. 0.065. Um, and what we're looking at is in the higher level, look what's happened. It's it's rising in price. The MACD is kind of weak. Stochastic's very weak at 49%, but price is the arbiter of a trend. Remember that. You can look at all the technicals you want. You have to be putting it together with are there higher highs and preferably higher lows. It doesn't have to be, but you don't want to break the major low. Are there higher highs or are there lower lows and lower highs? I mean, that's your trend. So just to put it, looks like a head and shoulders. Uh, yeah, look, this is on the left side. You've got your left shoulder. Uh, this is the high of the 20, no, the 10th of January, 22. And then it makes a higher high of, uh, I'm giving you the numbers that are written, 18.74. Of course, it's 1.874. 18.74 at peak E on the 19th. Pulls back down to the 17, low 17s, has a big rally, and that rally takes you to on the 22nd, 26th, 18.57, and now it's going, gone sideways. Now, I always say a head and shoulders pattern, uh, just one of my least favorite. I have other ways of using this as a technique. I don't dismiss it. I'm just saying it's, no, it's one of my least favorite because of the time you recognize it's breaking the, the neckline. It's kind of too late. You've, the bulk of the move has been done. So I, I'm just saying that this, I prefer to think this as the oval pattern within a range. If it takes out 1.7 on a closing basis, or 17 in this case, um, that says that's a failure pattern. It should go lower. That means yields will go lower. Bonds will go higher. And if it takes out decisively and gets into the 19s anytime in February, that says watch out because that's extended leg C in the monthly chart. And that whole area, that's my target of 1.949, 19.49 back in December of 2019, just over two years ago, that becomes the target. And if there's a break above it, I think we're looking at a market that's going to say, uh-oh, much high yields, inflation based on the DBA, the DBA, which is the uh, DB Agriculture Fund, up uh, two cents today at 20.44. And yet at the same time, I keep looking at this and I say, why is the IAI, our IAI, iShares Broker Dealer ETF, which we've been long since 24th of March of 2020, uh, having still having taken off lots of little bits, but still have a nice core position at 108.90. Why is that working so well? Had a question about Goldman Sachs. Remember now, we've just moved to, from the XLF to uh, all the way through to Goldman Sachs, um, and and the question was, um, is it a good time to buy Goldman Sachs? I said, yeah, I think it's holding well. It needs to fill the gap, but it's holding well. You've got to have a fairly tight stop. But my favorite in that particular sector is Schwab, 
which we did have and don't have right now, and it's breaking this resistance right now. It's up 84 cents at 91.20. This is telling me that their public is just, they've taken a hit, but they have money. They have taken some money off, and that they are buying stocks. That This is my interpretation. I have no proof. Probably I should ask someone like uh, um, Kevin Hinks, but he's not going to tell me because that would be, yeah, part of uh, the TD Ameritrade, they, they don't mention those things, uh, and rightfully so, because it would be a conflict. But I'm thinking that the public is here. Um, they, they are playing the market. They've decided this is the place to be. Even if we get hurt, it's the place longer term. Kind of my interpretation. I'll be back in a moment. We didn't uh, look at um, the SMHs, which is the Semiconductor Index. Ah, okay, back quite nicely. Only down for 279. I think they're going to struggle for a while, but they're holding quite nicely here. I'll be back in a moment. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Back. So, Mel's Trap is doing an overview here. This conductor's came back nicely down to 371. Uh, I don't think they're done uh, going up, but I do say that the uh, weekly chart, and certainly at this point, the monthly chart says, the semiconductors are going to be under pressure for a while longer. Individual companies are going to do nicely in this little phase right here. But in, in on the whole, I think that once we get to the 289, 291 area, that's the big test of follow-through strength. Can they do that? Now, let's just have a look at the E-mini because I think that we should have a little bit more of a rally. Yep, there we are. 
So that is E, it's either check wave instant restart, so it's either E, F, or um, F slash B going to C. I'm going to call, I'm going to be as, as conservative as possible right now, call this F slash B. Uh, maybe maybe on a Friday, oh, tomorrow's Friday, maybe tomorrow I'll spend time, we'll actually do this live as if it was a trading session, just um, so we can go through different techniques in the chat and wait. So this is going to G slash C, I, it looks like a C right now, but I've got to be careful because the MACD is just starting to uh, lose a little energy here and you've got to turn around the on-balance volume. All right, we'll be back for a moment, let's go on. Now, this is what I wanted to show you. Uh, with the questions that came in, well, let me quickly go through the questions. Uh, in the den as well, it's almost the same question. Um, where was it? I saw it earlier on. WFC, this is, this is Wells Fargo. This is part of the whole banking sector. Look, Wells Fargo, uh, since the low that was made on the 24th, it's working its way high. This is still a gray B. I guess it looks blue because it is blue. I'll make it gray because you need to know that it's just, it's a counter trend rally at this particular point in a V-shaped pattern. Doing very nicely as long as the yields are going higher. It should help, not be the, the only thing, but it should help uh, Wells Fargo. Leg D in the monthly chart, peak D in the weekly chart, peak D in the daily at 58.87 on the 14th of January. Pulls back to the 51, seven points. That's what, 12, 13%. Now it's coming back nicely. I suspect that this rally, the big test will be. Now we've seen so many stocks, I actually wrote it down. How many stocks have made these? double tops and then pull back within pennies. And let me just go to, I wrote down one that I was just looking at the other day, Met, this is Met Life. Look how well Met, the, the um, where did it go? Uh, it was this, what I wanted to say is, oh, did I write that in, Met Life? Oh, it was this particular high that I was looking at right here. Look at this. MetLife in the monthly chart goes on in May of 2021, goes to 67.68. Pulls back pretty sharply down to the 55. So, yeah, 13 points is 20% correction. And then what does it come back to? It comes back to 66.86. And then it pulls back again. We've seen these double tops. And what happened to the shallower the double top, the greater the chances of a retest. And yeah, you've got your retest. MetLife, and this is an area that I mentioned on my Saturday overview for subscribers, how some of these um, insurance companies, different kinds of insurance, but basically kind of insurance companies, have had these uh, done very well and continue to do very well. Manulife, MFC, thank you. MFC, I was going to look at, um, yeah, same pattern. Look at this. MFC come, came back nicely at 21, uh, down just 14 cents today. ABC, peak C in the monthly chart. It should go to a D. It should still go to the 22 level. You, you know, a lot of them. Uh, one that I was particularly interested in was... Um, now, I can't remember the name. So it's Matt, it's M T R. Oh, um, oh, CB, check out CB. I'll check out CB. Oh, yeah, Chubb, Chubb Corporation. Look at that all time high. And that's, that's what I'm seeing. This is a bifurcated, it's actually a trifurcated market because you have, within the tech sector, you just have some things that are holding really well. Others are just collapsing. Within, um, uh, within the, Financials, you've got some stocks like we still have Bank of America, a long position from 31, it's at 47. It went all the way to 50.08. Uh, these things are holding pretty nicely considering what's going on. Let's see where Facebook is now. Has it come back a little bit? Are there buyers? Yeah, it's come back to near the high of the day. It's down only 75, 75 points, down 23. It had a low of 237.07. I wish it was a round number low. I, Tomorrow I'll spend time on talking about gap downs, what I expect, what's good, if it takes out the, the low of the, the, the bar of the gap. In other words, if it go, tomorrow, if it goes under 237.07, especially if it closes under 237.07, that's going to be very poor action. But if it happens to close inside the gap, what a huge gap from the three... 318-ish area down to the days of 248. Oh, round, there's your round number. Remember, we always look for the round numbers on, on uh, hysterical days. So if 248 is taken out on a closing basis, especially today, that'll be a better sign. Um, anyway, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Meantime, 
Uh, could I post CLF? Yes. Uh, hold, now I can get to the questions. No, I haven't finished. I've got to gold, right? CLF, very nice action. 19.20, up 33 cents. Cleveland Cliffs, this was almost one that I wanted to include today in our list. Uh, I just needed to be very careful, that's all. So, yeah, it's acting very nicely. Counter trend rally, because that rectangle formation is going to form a huge at 20.34. You'd love it to go from 1920 to 2034, uh, a one point gain, 5% gain, gives you a little bit of room. But that's what I'm looking at. Looking out in 2022, I suspect the CLF, Cleveland Cliffs, flat roll steel, uh, and iron ore pellets will make an all time high above the 26s into the 27s. <clears throat> Prediction, let's see what happens. All right. Uh, you're reloaded at 16. Fabulous. That's 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 great. Good, good. Congratulations. Question I had about CF, which is um, CF Industries Holdings, hydrogen, etc. The stalling pattern right now. You remember someone um, e uh, emailed me to say, "What do I do? I've been lightening up a little bit." I'm just saying, and I, I say yesterday, I wouldn't get do too much lightening up. I think this is in the right area. I think it's doing products, fertilizers, clean energy, emissions, oh, all sorts of things like that. I like this. And um, I, I see if it's a symbol down 78 cents at 73.78, made a new recovery high. Was at an all-time high yesterday, just under 76. I, I'm, I'm still calling this a B. It could give it an alternate count, F slash B. I just don't see it right now. MACD's rising, stochastics at 85%. On balance volume says, yep, it needs a little bit of a pullback, a uh, tad overbought. I like it. Weekly chart is improving. Monthly chart looks good. So, yeah, I do like CF. Uh, we did have it. We're going to have it right now. CF added to fund strats buy list. Okay, good, good. Um, XBI, question about the XBI. What was the question? Uh, XBI is bouncing. You know, the XBI, the whole building area, this is S&P. Uh, oh, sorry, XBI. Is the biotech area, um, uh, XBI. I spoken about this the other day. Let's just go to the IBB. It should have the same pattern pretty much. Yep, it does. So the IBB is the NASDAQ Biotech ETF. They're both actually moving. Sometimes they're going different percentage gains or losses. But here they're acting very much together. I think right at this particular moment, I think the biotech area, the, the breather that it's taken from uh, mid-January to this, this is that the last big breather says that now you have to wait just a little bit. You have to build some bases. So that's what I'm looking at. Uh, Spider S Insurance Jeff is Oh, okay, I need to Yeah, think quite fast. I'll be back in a moment, guys. Now, 252 SPs down. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. Peter White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back, and I forgot that in the WFC, the Wells Fargo, I guess the real question was, um, where's it going to? My, the way I'm looking at it right now, if the MACD can cross positive, that'll give another boost. And if the yields remain low, uh, sorry, if the bonds remain low like this, it should try, if it can hold above 56.83, touch 57.35, there's a good chance you could try for the 58.87. The only reason why I brought those double top, uh, uh, the, uh, the picture of the double top in was because we've seen it so many times and then they stall. And that's what I would say that if Wells Fargo, it's another two points, actually about two and a half points. That's a lot for a stock like Wells Fargo. But if it's able to do that and if it's get, able to touch the 57s, then I think that 58.87 will be the sign that says, are we now in this Counter trend. I'm calling it for now a counter trend bounce. Uh, I don't see any reason why not to call it a counter trend bounce in the general market, um, but it's very selective. That means that they can go up. And I put this look. Keep your eye on the left side chart. Doesn't this look exactly like uh, the rally? This is just the left side chart. The rally, the 50% or slightly more from the 41.70 on the XLF high of the 13th down to the 36.82, 24th of January uh, low. And yeah, so this is another thing. So by Tuesday of this coming week, I've got to give it a few days. If it can hold, the XLF can hold 39, 37, that's comparable to the same thing in the Wells Fargo, about, um, you know, 1%, uh, 2% pullback. And if it can keep going higher, that's going to be very important. But if the direct angle formation in the weekly chart says that has the look of a, of a potential head and shoulders coming up, and I'll be watching to see what happens at 40.80 if it gets there in the uh, XLF, and that'll be Wells Fargo would be comparable to if it gets to on a weekly basis. Uh, there's there's nothing on the left side, so this is a little more open. So, if, as I say, 57.10, can it go above that is a big question. Here we go to the um, uh, question of, in the den, A, Agilent, what was it? Um, uh, would you buy Agilent at these levels in a peak A? This is a peak A, gray peak A, because it's a retracement. We've been long. Since right here, let's just go through this. We've been long. I uh, started along at 70.69 back in the 3rd of, of April 2020. We've taken lots of little bits all the way to about a 100% gain. Um, and I've tried to keep a core position, even though it plummeted from 179 down to 130. 40 points. I mean, that's 23%. That's, that's a big turnaround. But I, I've said uh, the reason why I want to keep it for subscribers is if it can hold this week, I might consider it a, an add to, and then new subscribers can get in 
because it's in the Agile and Technologies, in the scientific solutions for labs and businesses, it, it better have a decent balance because it's got the one-to-one -one already to the downside. So I'm just going to say at 142, the only way I would do this, if this is brand new to you, just put your foot in the door at 142.85, just to get a feel for your own portfolio risk and all that. And I would even there have a two-point stop. I would not want to break under 140.85. Uh, 140.30 is the, is the ninth period exponential moving average support. It, it's still a little early. I want to see leg B, or even if it's A, but I prefer if it's B, have one decent pullback and then add another leg going to test the 147 a level of the 200 period moving average, which it did once before and then it broke down. So um, that's key to me. So you could go in here, 142, if it manages to go one penny above the high of yesterday uh, at 144.76, just add another small little position and you try to build up a position. But the weekly chart says, wow, there's a lot of work to be done. And the monthly chart says, it has to look more like a D than a B, but I have to call it a, a B for now. And that's almost like the S&P in a way. Um, we'll see. So um, a question came up. All right, that's it. And so that was Agent and Keys. So Keys is another one that we were looking at a long time ago. Someone had mentioned it, and I said, wow. Oh, oh, someone in the den said he works for the company that does the same as Agent. It's called Keys. Or the, yeah, Keys, Key, Keys Site Tech does the same sort of thing. But I didn't quite like the chart as much as I liked Agilent. Um, it's done pretty much the same thing, but this rebound isn't even close. So this is the one that I, I'd avoid that. I'd prefer just nibbling at Agilent. The uh, question is, oh, oh, they report earnings in February. Um, both A and Keys will report in February. I'd buy both. Okay, thank you. That's uh, 23 bills in the, in the debt. Um, I, I'm just saying I still want to be a little cautious in this market. Remember, it's, it's really the market environment that you got to also deal with. Okay, let's go on. We're looking at another question came in. Did I get that? Did I get that? Um, oh, so yeah, the, a statement came in. Um, actually, it's a quote from the New York Times sent to me. I don't usually get into this because this is this is really part of the political side, but this is something that I've discussed over the years periodically. New York Times front page, gerrymandering by New York Democrats may flip three House seats. So what I've said is that gerrymandering, gerrymandering is in the eyes of the beholder. If you, if you state out loud that it's for this particular purpose and because of this purpose, you, you can't even question it, then of course it's right. But the opposing person will say, wait, 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 wait that's called gerrymandering. So we've seen it here in Boston under different uh, auspices. They had a whole bunch of changes made um, and they said it was for the people. That was gerrymandering. I'm just talking about the term. I'm not talking about whether it's right or wrong. I have no, I, I haven't gone into in that depth other than to say, to me, I've watched gerrymandering since I've been in the United States. Always a fascinating thing. Um, the term itself is very fascinating. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, yeah, it happens. It just depends on which side you're on because it won't be called that by the people that are doing it. They're doing something righteous. Um, so whatever it is. Now, I just wanted to mention that. And then someone said market. Um, today's market is a lacking volume, which is my, my book. Uh, and my book is not signaling any bottom. What's happening in Facebook? It's mind-boggling. Uh, just who's doing all the selling? Uh, let me just I'll speak to that just for a moment. And the reason why I'm saying you've got to be you've got to be very selective and very cautious. In other, in other words, for positions that we want to buy now at this particular point, I'm saying let it come back down to our level so we can have a good cushion. I think that's a safer way to play things. Um, I want to go through a bunch of a bunch of questions that I got. Uh, can I do that? Can I do it Thursday morning? Yeah. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll do that right now. Uh, so, uh, so Amazon, let me just do Amazon. Uh, Amazon is down 207 at 2804. Wait, when did, did Amazon come? Oh, the dollar, please, it's coming up. I, that was a question earlier on. Let me do that before I forget that. Look, the dollar's having a bit of a bounce today, was having a bit of a bounce today. Now it's down 51 ticks at 95.46. That is underneath the rectangle low. Why isn't gold, have I not done all my numbers? Yeah, why isn't gold up? 
comparably, it doesn't have to be the same proportion, but comparably in counterpoint, moving up as dollar come pulls back. That's what I'm saying. When people say hey, it's not different this time, no, it's different this time, and then roll their eyes. Yes, it is different this time. With the dollar getting smashed like that, Bowser's dollar, because we've been long since 1907, from April 2018. Um, that is really very interesting. The gold is down six. Silver is down 35 cents at 2235. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. I've got a question here that I want to get you all. Well, it's the last minute of a few moments of the show. Um, a question about diamonds. I've got the Dow Diamond 354.5. Uh, oh, uh, there is. I think I can. Uh, let me just see. Um, yeah, diamonds, 353 calendar for uh, calls for tomorrow. So what I've said is, uh, if the if the Dan, if the uh, diamonds can hold above 351.00 into the 2 p.m. Eastern time, one o'clock to 2 p.m. hour, and actually get to the 354.45 level, I want it later. I don't want it earlier. I don't want it now. I'd prefer to see it later. I think then the Dow will show that it has a little bit of energy left. And what I would say is if it rallies into the close, take as much as off as you can, and then tomorrow will just be a gamble. But I would try to do that today because tomorrow, 
a lot of sorting out by the end of the day is going to take place. Where is Facebook? How does it come back? Are the other stocks, how is the ARKK ETF handling this whole thing? Where is it? What's coming back? What's working? What's not? So if you can do it all today, do it today, and then and, and there's jobs number tomorrow. Uh, so I, I would try to do that today. And maybe leave a couple if you can uh, for tomorrow. But I, I, I know you usually get a, a, a quite a bunch. So and 351, if it goes under 351, you got to start being a little careful. So as it stands right now, that's the way I'm looking at it. So let me do this because Larry, I think Larry has a problem with his throat today with his voice. So, all right, we'll see how we can handle that over the next few minutes. I think it'll be a replay of Tommy's show. It was a great show earlier on. So let's just make this as clear as possible. The VIX index, this is, be very selective. We've been talking about having a nice cash position over the last uh, uh, weeks and weeks and weeks. I've been saying that. I still think that's a good idea. And be selective in your in your buy. And you know, this is a the VIX index is going back to 20 percent If the volatility index goes under 20 percent steady, a little late and soft, and it goes under 22. This market should bounce very nice. That's pretty. Have a wonderful day, and uh, check out.